I'm James Russell, editor of Element Magazine, and I'm here today to meet a man who's trying to revolutionise compost. Here we are with Ben Bell, the founder of Low Impact and the creator of The Hungry Bin. G'day Ben, how's hey it going? James, how are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah. So do you want to tell us how you got into this, how you started? Yeah, well it's a long story, but essentially I used to work in advertising, so I was working, making ads for banks, cars, insurance companies, so, you know, biscuits, all those kinds of things. And essentially I felt like I wanted to work on the side of the ledger that was making a difference, not on the side of the ledger that was creating the problem. I heard you speak once before and you said that you were from a long line of uh, composters. Two or three generations ago, everyone had a garden, everyone knew how to compost, everyone knew what, what they could grow and, and took great pride in it. Sure. Back then the compost heap was just a big big bin of leaves and bits and pieces and food so on. Oh right? absolutely, but you know back in the day there were actually compost clubs, so people actually used to get together and and talk about the compost and you know talk about how they got the most out of it. So there was a really good understanding for, you know, it goes back centuries about composting, using worms to grow food and improve soil fertility, those kinds of things. Sure. Yeah. But you took a different design approach to this model, right? Yeah, absolutely. So what we've done is tried to remove the barriers that have prevented people from using worms to compost. It's been well known and well understood for a long time that worms are the fastest way to break down food waste and they make the best fertilizer. But there's not really a product in the market until Hungry Bin arrived that made it very simple and easy, especially in an urban context, and that's the key. I think if we're going to change our whole economic system and the whole way we do things, we actually need to create solutions that are applicable in the modern world, so applicable to us in our modern busy lives, and create solutions that fit in with the way we live. So it's not like we need to take some giant step backwards, we actually just need to, in small steps, just reorientate how we do things. And, if we can take a really amazing natural process like worms breaking down food waste and creating fertiliser and use that to reduce our waste stream, use that to increase the value of the fertiliser we're creating and then use that to create as much food as possible as close to where we live, you know, we've gone a long way to solving some of the big issues that we have to grapple with. Yeah, sure. Mm. And, and you're selling these around the world now too, right? Absolutely. So these uh, hungry bins are for sale right now in Spain, Holland, Belgium, uh, you can buy them in Germany, we've sold them into the UK. Australia is our biggest market, so you know, we sell a lot of hungry bins in Australia. And that was, that was the goal right from the start. Didn't you design them in a specific way for free? Yeah, well, absolutely. If you, if you look at this box, this box is actually optimised for a 40 foot high cube container. Because we realised if we were going to raise the capital to get this business off the ground, one of the things we were going to have to be able to do was demonstrate that we were going to be able to export it quite easily. Mm. And also, if you think about the New Zealand market's quite small in a global context, but it's a great place to test new products and new ideas. So my, my philosophy is we've got an amazing opportunity to, to develop and test products that are relevant in the world context here, and then we just need to find ways of getting that idea you know, out to the rest of the world. And so this box is not only designed to fit in a shipping container, but it's also designed to be the optimum size for freight, freighting worldwide. So if you think about FedEx or UPS or you know, any postal system, they can handle a box this size, so that was one of the constraints in designing the product was how do we fit this product into the box so that we can then make it as easy for people sure. to use as possible. We take a look at one. Yeah, come on, let's have a look. Now these look a little bit like a wheelie bin. Yeah, well actually I started out making worm farms from broken wheelie bins. And I eventually had friends and family started to buy them and I put some on trade me and I couldn't keep up with demand. And that, that's what really told me that there was, you know, a hole in the market that could be filled and yeah, that's what led to this product. So partially too, we made it look like it was similar or like a wheelie bin. So it just fitted in with the infrastructure everyone's got at their house. They're used to using a product that looks like this, only this one's completely different. Sure. So instead of unloading this into a truck each week and taking it away, you actually just put your food waste in here and it never goes anywhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does it work? So we're using compost worms because nothing breaks down as fast as when it's eaten by an animal. The worms like to eat the food when it's soft but before it's rotten, so it doesn't smell. They eat their weight in food a day, so there's two to four kilos of worms in here eating their weight in food a day. And so this bin will process the food waste produced by an average family, no problem at all. Okay? And the amazing thing is that worms eat the food waste and they break it down into an incredible fertiliser. The key is this one's a continuous flow system. You're continuously adding the food waste to the top and you're taking the finished product off the bottom. So you get this incredible liquid fertiliser from the bottom, which is just amazing on your plants. 
And for most people, every two to four months, you harvest a brick of casting off the bottom, and again, that's just the most incredible fertiliser soil conditioner there is. Does it have to be mixed with other soil, or is the... No, plants will grow straight in there. It's pH and how about, the, so uh, how about the juice that comes out the bottom? Yeah, we recommend to people that you dilute it 10 to 1, but you don't have to because, again, it's pH neutral and it won't burn the roots of your plants. Right. The key with the liquid is that all the nutrients in there are in a water-soluble form that the plant can uptake immediately. So that's the trick with the worms. The worms break the food waste down into a plant-ready form, and that's the key. Right. If you can break your food waste down at your back door into the best fertiliser there is, you're doing about the best thing you can for the environment. Sure. So you could actually plant a seedling straight into that compost, or yep. does it have to be Absolutely. mixed in the soil? No, you'll see plants germinating in it all the time. Right. A good place yeah. to start off seedlings? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a very good place to start off seedlings. Mm. In fact, in places like Kew Gardens, where they're um, germinating seeds that may be two or three hundred years old, they use worm juice as one of the kind of activators. So the enzymes in worm juice help plants germinate. Wow, mm. wow. That's great. It's pretty amazing. So, yeah, so you have to dig down far to get to the worms? No, the worms are surface feeders, they're right on the top and that's the key. Most of the activity in the system happens within the first 100, 200 millimetres. And is that the reason for the, for mm. the shape of the...? The tapered shape compresses the castings and the compression forces the worms up to the surface so they come to the top. Right. Because the worms are up at the surface it then makes it easy to harvest the finished product from the bottom right, so without disturbing the worms in the top. Right, there's no worms in the castings when it pops off the bottom? No. Yes. Okay. Have a look. Yeah, that's some pretty good stuff, isn't it? Yeah. So you can put, can you put bones and meat and things in here as well? Yeah, you can put anything that was once alive in here. You just have to be careful with acidic food, um, dairy products, meat, those kinds of things, which are quite rich. And all you do if you've got some dairy product or some meat is you just add some more fibre. If you're putting in lots of um, green waste like this, you don't need to balance it all with anything else. Right, mm. right. And there's not anything that the worms don't particularly like to eat? Just, I'll just lock this back up. Is there anything that the worms don't particularly like to eat? Well, they're like us, they'll eat the chocolate cake long before they eat the lemon rind. So, yeah. you know, they don't like eating lots of acidic food, they don't like eating lots of dairy products, but they'll pretty well eat anything that's, a, you know, anything that's coming out of your kitchen, they'll pretty well eat. And how, what's the actual, the, the biology of a worm, how does, it, how does it crack through this, how does it... Well, you know, it probably won't, they won't eat, uh, they won't eat a um, eggshell. So the worms like to eat the food when it's soft but before it's rotten. And the reason is they're after the enzymes and bacteria is breaking it down, not the food itself. They've got a gizzard like a bird, so they, they eat the food and they grind it up very fine and that breaks down all the in cell structures yeah, in their gut. Yeah. Compost worms have a slightly different... Um, arrangement than earthworms. Earthworms are like a hollow tube and they eat the um, organic material out of the dirt, mm. whereas compost worms are eating the organic material to get to the enzymes and bacteria, breaking it down, so they're almost carnivorous in a sense. Right. But the key with the compost worms is that their gut bacteria is very, very efficient at breaking down the complex molecules in the food waste and getting it back to a plant-ready form. That's, that's the key. Mm -hmm. so the whole idea of breaking food waste down and composting it is to get it back into a plant-ready form. If you think about the plants spend all this time and energy concentrating nutrients and gathering them out of the soil and making complex molecules, those complex molecules have to be broken down in the gut of some animal to get it back to the form that the plant can uptake. So to complete the loop, you've got to come up through the plant, get to the plant, we eat it, because we're eating it, the most concentrated parts of the plants, mm. and then the organisms and bacteria and enzymes and moulds and funguses that are doing the composting process, what they're actually doing is breaking it back down into a form that, that we see in our soil that's available plant to the plant. Yeah. Sure. And all these other tiny organisms that are in here, yep. do they have a role to play in this as well? Oh absolutely. So there's a lot of um, opportunistic animals out there looking for a free lunch and we're bringing it out by the kilo. So they're all part of the process, they've all got a kind of symbiotic relationship and there's various different animals and insects in there eating the parts that the worms don't like. So it's actually a good thing. Mm. Thanks Ben. Hey no worries, nice to meet you. Likewise. So if you'd like to find out more about composting or hungry bins, come to the Only Hunger showroom or go to hungrybin.co.nz.